Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with the few of my favorite things tag. And I was tagged in this tag by Tori from Hufflepuff Discovery, what feels like a really long time ago. And so I'm sorry that I'm only just now getting around to it. But so this tag is really not bookish. It's just going to be us chatting about a few of my favorite things. Question number one is who is your favorite musician or band? And my favorite band is Fall Out Boy. If I was just going to say a single person, as in a single musician, I think I would still say Lady Gaga because her discography is just incredible to me. But also in terms of just kind of a single solitary musician, I would say Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee is one of my most listened to artists every year on Spotify, and I love and adore her. Did she have a bad song? I don't think she did. But my true answer is is still Fall Out Boy. Fall Out Boy is my favorite band and I've loved them since I was a wee emo kid. And so I still love them and I think I always will. But I also really love Aerosmith and I love Skid Row. And Skid Row doesn't get a lot of airplay nowadays, so you may not even know who they are. But uh, they were a hair metal band from the late 80s and their hair was absolutely incredible, but their music was also pretty great. Question number two, or what are your top three favorite films? Uh, and I have these locked in. So number one is Titanic. I think Titanic is the best film ever made. I really truly do. And even if you don't like the story of Titanic, I really don't think you can argue with me when I tell you that I think it is the most beautifully filmed film of all time. It's just incredible. The sets, the location, the music. There is a part in the film that gets me every single time. And it is this part immediately after they play near my god to thee which is this really beautiful emotional scene where the band plays their last song on the deck as the ship is sinking and so they show um, people putting their kids to sleep who are not going to be able to get off the ship uh, they show an older couple in bed with the water rushing in they show all the dishes clatter uh, and they show you know the water rushing down the hallways it's just a really beautiful and impactful piece of cinema in my opinion but immediately after this scene this is the scene everybody talks about but immediately after this scene uh, there is this swelling crescendo of music when the glass dome on top of the ship breaks. And this is where a lot of people have clustered for safety. Uh, and so it is just genuinely to me still one of the most stunning pieces of cinema I have ever seen. The crescendo of the music as you see people running up the deck because by this point the ship is going down. So she's at a diagonal. People are running up to get to the end of the ship. People are screaming. The glass dome breaks. People are getting sucked into the ship. Uh, the pylons start falling. It is just a genuinely beautiful film. I will link to that scene down below if you haven't seen it in a long time and I think you will still be floored by it. Every time I watch Titanic, I feel as if I am seeing it for the first time. It holds the same magic for me every single time I watch it. My second favorite film is Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. No one is shocked. Uh, so this movie was transformative for me as I'm sure it was for uh, many a 10 year old, but I still to this day remember seeing this movie for the first time. I remember being in the theater and I remember being wowed. I will say my first love, I think, was Jack Dawson from Titanic, but my second love was Will Turner. And he's still, he's still number one for me. Call me Orlando Bloom. The most handsome man, genuinely he is. And there are several moments in this film when you just see him standing there and you're like, how are you looking like this? How can you look this good just standing outside? He can. It's just incredible how well the clothes fit him. But this was incredibly well cast. It's really funny. Uh, it's really adventurous. And I love anything set on the sea. That's what I've come to the conclusion is that if it's set on a boat, I'm probably going to be interested in it. My third favorite film is The Mummy. Uh, and so no one is shocked by that either, I'm pretty sure. What do I need to say about The Mummy? It's also one of the greatest films ever made. Everyone loves it, uh, so I don't feel as though there's much that I need to say here. It's just a really excellent film. Number three, what is your favorite scent? Uh, in terms of candles, anything that smells like food or a baked good. Uh, so something that smells like cookies or cake, that's really what I'm into, or even coffee. I really love coffee scented candles. In terms of me personally, I don't wear a scent. I don't wear any perfume and I also don't wear scented lotion uh, because I feel very sensitive to that. I don't really 
like the smell of most things. And so I use mostly unfragranced lotions and body washes and shampoos because I think it's too much. I don't really like um, a scent. If I did though, I do think I would like Rose because some of my skincare products that I use smell like Rose and I really enjoy them. And I would never have said that I was somebody who was into a floral scent, but they're really soft, I think, in skincare, whereas they can be really artificial feeling in actual body lotion. Number four, what's your favorite Disney film? Okay, controversial opinion time. My favorite Disney film is Pocahontas. I love Pocahontas, I'll Die on This Hill, because Pocahontas is just so well done. Pocahontas was actually the first movie that I ever saw in a movie theater. I don't remember this, but I have to think that it probably does impact my feelings towards it a little bit. I know that Pocahontas is extremely inaccurate, and I completely understand that. Absolutely, I do. But the message of the film is so meaningful to me and I think is such a wonderful message for kids uh, is that this is how it could have gone. And that's what you really wish, I think, watching this movie. It doesn't matter to me the inaccuracies because to me the point of the film uh, is this really, really wonderful and impactful message. And Pocahontas is another movie that I always feel as if I'm seeing for the first time. I always get emotional when I watch the ending of it and she waves to him. I get emotional every single time she starts running through that forest to wave. And apparently as a child, I used to stand at the TV and cry uh, when she told him goodbye. So uh, I'm still, I'm still secretly a five-year-old. That still really makes me emotional. But I think the film is so romantic. I really just love the relationship between John Smith and Pocahontas. It's one of the few Disney films where I felt like, um, the love interest and the princess had a lot of interaction prior to the end of the movie. And so that is something that I've always really liked is just the relationship that they have. If you forget about the fact that this is telling supposedly a real life story, I think you can really enjoy Pocahontas for what it is. It's got slamming music. I mean, truly the greatest soundtrack. The cast is incredible. The story is so wonderful. It is truly my favorite, and it's one of my favorite movies. But probably in my top three are also Mulan and Hercules. Mulan is, I think, maybe unequivocally to me, the greatest of the Disney movies. I think there is no flaw in Mulan. Mulan is just an impeccable film. It is so good, again, at getting its message across, and I'm also always kind of emotional when her dad talks to her and says the flower that blooms in adversity is the rarest and most beautiful of all. I just love it. I think there's such really great messaging in the films of this era from the late 90s. And I'm not gonna lie, I'll Make a Man Out of You is the song that gets me out of bed in the morning. It's what my alarm is. So uh, that's definitely also a banger. Another great soundtrack here. Hercules, I just have a soft spot for and I can't even explain it. Once again, if you forget the story that Hercules is trying to tell, you can really enjoy it. There are a lot of Greek myth buffs out there who just can't enjoy Hercules because it is so different from what the actual myth is, but just take it for what it is and have fun. It's a great ride. But weirdly enough, now included under the Disney umbrella are the Marvel films. And so I really wanna know down below what your favorite Marvel film is. I'll tell you mine, my favorite Marvel film is Captain America Winter Soldier. I just love it, love it. That is, I think, actually one of the very few of the Marvel films that I would truly give five stars to, that I think is a really, really great film on its own and that stands on its own fairly well. But I also have a soft spot for Thor Ragnarok. Uh, as a Norse myth buff, that film was a feast and it was a whole lot of fun. But definitely tell me down below how you feel about Marvel movies and what your favorite Marvel Studios film is. I cannot wait for Spider-Man No Way Home. I hope that when I'm posting this, we have seen the second trailer uh, because I am so pumped about that film. Number five is what is your favorite season? I think I, like everyone else, really love autumn, but I also really love winter. I like to be cold. I think I was born too far south. I really, in my heart of hearts, I think I'm a Canadian or a Scandinavian, definitely. I was so excited when I moved to Denmark and uh, a Dane told me that they always sleep with their window open in the winter, uh, just under a really like heavy blanket. And I was like, oh my gosh, finally, 
my people because that is exactly what I do. And uh, so I do sleep with my window open when it's freezing. Once it gets under freezing, I'll, I'll close the window, but I really like to sleep cold and I really like to be cold. I also love winter fashion because I love coats and I love hats. Uh, so I just really like to be cold. I love the colder months of the year. What's your favorite seasonal drink? I guess I'm just gonna have to be basic and say the pumpkin spice latte uh, because I do enjoy it. I'm not a big coffee drinker and I'm not a big seasonal drinker either. I'm not someone who, when it gets cold, automatically starts drinking hot chocolate or anything like that. And even when I say I enjoy a pumpkin spice latte, I've only had one during its season, so I don't even know whether I can consider it a favorite. I don't go out of my way to seek seasonal drinks, I guess. Do you have a favorite shirt or article of clothing? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, if I did, I think it would actually be house clothes. So like something that I would just wear around the house. I do have a few favorite sweatshirts that I wear at this time of year. And so I might say those, but in general, in terms of just everyday clothing, I love a lot of what I have and I just really like transforming it season to season and making something last throughout the entire year rather than just wearing it in the summer or wearing it in the winter. I like to get pieces that can do a lot of work for me. Uh, so that is something that I really enjoy and that makes me discover the clothing anew each season, which I think is pretty great, but it also means I don't really have a favorite. Who is your favorite author? I still think I've got to say my favorite author is Anne Rice <laughs> because after rereading Interview with the Vampire, I just fell in love with her writing again and it made me believe that generally every other book that I've given five stars by her would likely also hold up. And so I think statistically, she is the author that I have read the most from and she's also the author that I have given the most five stars to. Do you have a favorite spot for reading or writing? I would say no. Weirdly enough though, I think if I was to say what my favorite spot is, I think it would have to be the kitchen table. I really love reading at a table, especially a big book that can fold open and stay open. I like to read at a table, which I know sounds really weird, but I like the structure of that. That's also where I would like to write generally. Um, but in terms of writing, I generally only write at certain times of the day. Uh, so I think I gear up in the morning, but the afternoon into the early evening is like fugue state for my brain. And that's when I'm on the writing train nine times out of 10, if I ever am. Uh, so that's generally not happening at the, uh, at the kitchen table, but I like to be somewhere with a lot of light for both reading and writing. What's your favorite food or dessert? Uh, I think my favorite meal would have to be pasta of some kind. I would say there is a meal that I make generally every week and depending on the season, it is either broccoli or asparagus pasta. So right now it's broccoli pasta and it's just any sort of pasta that you want. Good olive oil, garlic, red pepper flakes, uh, and then a lot of Parmesan cheese and roasted broccoli or roasted asparagus and it is amazing. It's my favorite meal. I could eat pasta any which way. Uh, one of the best meals I ever had was pasta. The last time I went to Italy, which was two years ago, this time of year actually, uh, the last time I went, it was truffle season. It was like the two weeks of the year when you can get a certain type of truffle. And so I tried it uh, and I had truffle pasta. It is still to this day one of the best things that I have ever eaten. Uh, so generally when I look back and I think what are the best meals I've ever had, they were all pasta. In terms of dessert, there's not a dessert I would turn down except for maybe a pie. I'm not interested in pies, uh, tarts. I'm not interested in anything that is a fruit dessert. I just never have been into that. To me, a dessert is not a dessert unless it's chocolate, nine times out of 10. But I also really like, um, like French desserts, probably one of my favorite fancy desserts is the Napoleon, which is a French dessert with all this creme pat in it and it's just decadent and wonderful. But I also really love a birthday cake. Birthday cake tastes different than just regular white cake and icing, doesn't it? Birthday cake just tastes special and it doesn't matter whose birthday it is. Uh, birthday cake is just really good. What's your favorite time of day? I love 11 a.m. I really do. I think 11 a.m. to 1 and then maybe uh, 6 and 7 in the evening 
I also really like, depending on the time of year, but I really like late morning. I think that's when I feel the most motivated to do things, and that's when I still feel as though there's enough time left in the day to actually achieve something. Uh, so I really like late morning. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is emerald green. Uh, I really love green of all shades. Sage green is also a really big favorite color for me. But um, in general, I wouldn't say to wear, although I love wearing green because I claim that my eyes are green. My eyes are actually hazel, but I always claim that they are green. So I like to wear a green shirt to bring them out occasionally. But my favorite color to wear is pink. Uh, and I still love pink and decor as well. So maybe pink and green is what I should say. Who are your top three favorite YouTube channels? Okay, I think I, along with everyone else, love Kayla from Books and La La. I drop everything for a video of hers. I love her so much. And it's interesting because she and I have absolutely nothing in common in terms of reading. I don't think we ever read the same book. And if we do, we don't agree on it. But I just think she's so innovative and creative. And I think she too was probably one of the first booktubers that I ever watched. So definitely Kayla from Books and La La. I love Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs who does a lot of uh, DIY and crafting. And so I get a lot of inspiration from her when I'm thinking about decorating, particularly at this time of year in the fall and at Christmas, when you're wanting to do something new. Uh, I really love to watch her and I always get some interesting ideas from her. I also love uh, Mark from Walter's World. I love Walter's World. Uh, whenever I travel, I always look up to see if Mark from Walter's World has a video on it. He has so many great videos on so many different cities and places around the world. I always check with him before I decide to travel anywhere. What's your favorite musical or play? Uh, Chicago. I started to say I don't have a favorite musical, but that would be a lie. I do love Chicago. Uh, I think I've seen Chicago a couple of times live, actually. In terms of a more general play, I still think I have to go with Romeo and Juliet. I love William Shakespeare, and I think Romeo and Juliet is talked about for a reason, and I do generally think it is one of his best. I was actually a drama student in high school, and so I was in quite a few plays, but I really, for the life of me, can't remember a single one. It seems like we did a lot of off-the-wall stuff, and we never did anything truly classical except in a couple of cases, but Electra, I do love Electra, and I can't remember which Electra it was, but I got to be Electra, and the cutest boy in the drama club played Orestes, and I was so happy about it, which is kind of creepy if you think about it, because Electra and Orestes are brother and sister, but they're in an incestuous relationship in that play. But uh, I think we did pretty well at that, actually. Uh, so I would have to say Electra, I have fond memories of being in, and I also really just love her as a figure. In terms of reading, I would say Romeo and Juliet. In terms of a musical, I would say Chicago. And number 15 is, what is your favorite place you've ever visited? And for me, my favorite place I've ever been is still the first place that I ever went when I went to Europe for the first time. So when I moved to Denmark, I went on a 10 day solo travel vacation to England. Uh, and I did not go to London at all in those 10 days. I went to a lot of smaller places trying to track Richard III, because I am predictable. But the first place that I went on this trip actually had very little to do with Richard, and it was all about Alfred the Great. And so the first place that I went was Winchester, England. And it is to this day my favorite place that I have ever visited. I have such fond memories of it. I still feel so totally in love with it. I was only there for one day, but I imagine I could have spent a week there completely content. And so Winchester is where uh, Alfred the Great lived. It was the seat of his court, essentially, and the seat of Wessex. Uh, in the old days of Anglo-Saxon England, there's not any of that that survives. But um, Alfred is buried in the city. We just don't know where. <laughs> so uh, we do know a general location, but they've never found him for sure, thanks to Henry VIII and the dissolution of the monasteries. But uh, I went to the place where he is buried and I was really emotional. And I also went to Winchester Cathedral. That was the first Gothic cathedral that I ever went into. And I was 
stunned and amazed. That's where I fell in love with them. So definitely I think Winchester is still my favorite place I've ever been. I've never fallen in love that quickly before in my life. Although York is kind of up there for me. York is an interesting one because I don't even feel as though I really saw it as a tourist. I feel like I walked into town and my brain just took roots in the city. I was only there for three days physically, but mentally, I never left York. I'm still there. But there are so many places that I could have named. Rome is really, really close to my heart, um, as is Florence. And so is Paris, actually. Paris is very, very close to me. And I've loved everywhere that I've ever been in France. Uh, France as a country, I just really like the architecture of France and um, the conversations that you get to have with people. It's just really a really interesting country that I've always been in love with, but I still think I've got to say Winchester because when I read this question, it was the first place that popped to mind. So now I have to tag people. I'm gonna tag them down below when I find out who has and who hasn't done this tag yet, but that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading, goodbye.